I'll definitely get some close-ups at the end, but do you see how freaking cool this looks? So I went to Target and um, I picked up something that I saw online that I thought was really cool and I really wanted to turn into some tarantula enclosures. Prepare yourself. They're little mushroom bug catcher kits. They're just like a children's toy. And as you see, the top has like this ventilation and then inside it comes with a couple little accessories for like bug catching. I think these are super cute. I actually bought some like extra other bug catcher kits to collect like some lightning bugs and June bugs with Fiona. So, but these ones I bought specifically to turn into some tarantula enclosures. So yeah, I went and I was lucky enough to be able to grab four and let me just say that apparently they're constantly being sold out because everybody keeps buying them because they're so cute but you can't actually like find them on their online for some reason I tried finding them online before I went up there to see if they had them and I just could not find them on their website at all come to find out I don't think they put dollar spot things on their website but what I did is somebody commented in a group the DPCI which is like the number you use to look it up I guess on Target's end to see if they have them in store so if you do do you want to go get some of these and like recreate this video? The DPCI is 234 two nine four seven seven nine so you just can call up target or go up there and ask them to punch it in their little computer thing and they should be able to tell if they have them in stock there because i did see that people are reselling them on like ebay and stuff for way more money than they are but yeah so we have four and these are going to be so fun to turn into little tarantula enclosures you could also do jumping spiders if you wanted i did see some people say that they wouldn't because the top unscrews but yes the top does unscrew but you have all this room up here for them to make a nest so you wouldn't necessarily be like ruining their little web hammock as long as they built it on the very top there and also just because uh, I wanted to make these into tarantula enclosures I kind of changed them up a little I just drilled an extra four ventilation holes on this side and an extra four on this side so yeah we are going to be rehousing some slings into these and test them out I will say they are a three dollar toy so the plastic isn't like the most sturdy it's not without flaws you know they're they're it's they're not perfect okay they're toys but I mean a lot of people just keep their tarantulas and little reusable deli containers and stuff and the plastic is exactly the same so I don't know I just think it'd be fun so let's do it okay so I am going to be removing this um, obviously we don't need this also they have these little tie strings I think I'm just going to cut it and give myself a little bit extra ventilation as well Keep in mind if you're trying to put like a smaller sling or a smaller jumping spider, this is the size of the ventilation holes. You're good with the size slings that I'm gonna be using, but like the very tiny ones or like smaller jumping spiders, you're gonna have to be careful because the ventilation is not super tiny. Like the ventilation that I put in the sides is definitely smaller than what is on the lid, but that's okay. Make sure you pack it down. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in a piece of cork in each one of these. And I'm also going to put in a little bit of frog moss, which this frog moss, as you can see, is like growing already, which is awesome. And of course, we're going to do leaf litter in each one. So I'm gonna go ahead and set all these up and then we will meet back here and discuss what they turn out like. All right, so I set up all four of them very similarly. It's just reptosoil, some leaf litter, some moss, and some cork bark. These are just some really simple, easy setups that most terrestrial or fossorial tarantulas will thrive in. So I'm pretty happy with how they came out. I think they look really awesome, and I think they're gonna look even cool when we put the little mushroom lids on them. But before we do that, we obviously need to put its new inhabitants inside of it. Um, so I actually have four slings with me 
me. We've rehoused these, I think, like once or twice in the past. I've had these slings for like ever. Like some of these slings I've been keeping and growing since I first joined the hobby, if that speaks for how slowly some of them grow. Let me just say that these enclosures they're in now are like perfectly fine, like they're suitable. The size is okay. I'm not rehousing them because they've kind of outgrown these enclosures. I'm actually wanting to rehouse them because I bought these enclosures from Dollar Tree. They're just like little acrylic uh, containers, but um, I bought them on looks alone without realizing that the lids are, they take nothing to remove. They actually could just be pushed up once maybe even a tarantula this size could possibly be strong enough to push it up enough to just you know, they don't seem very secure anymore. But these will be perfect. These are like the perfect size. Yeah, they're a little thinner on top, but the surface area is pretty similar. It's just circular instead of square. And also I'm able to fit more substrate in these. So they'll actually have the opportunity to burrow unlike they kind of do in, in these because they were quite smaller when I put them in these. Yeah, they don't really have room to burrow in them. So this will definitely provide more room for that. With these enclosures, they, you know, they're just dirt in like a plastic plant so they don't like look the best I mean they're fine again they're suitable they'll work but aesthetically you know you have to admit that this like live moss and the cork bar with the leaf litter like this all looks much you know it looks much prettier and so yeah I guess let's get started I don't know what order I'll go in or anything like that I guess we'll just do this one first. So we'll start out with, I guess, this bee, Amelia. I think she molted recently and she also looks a little hungry. Oh, she's kicking hair at me. Oh, still kicking hair at me. You are very feisty for what you are. Still kicking hair. All right, we've got her in there. All right, there she is. Wow, that's super cool looking. I think that this is gonna work out really well. I do have to say they're a little warped. Obviously when that's circular, there is gonna be some of that warping. That's just gonna really affect you looking into it, but it's not gonna affect them because their vision's really not there anyway. They kind of mainly just take in light. So they're not gonna be distorted like fish will in a circular tank. And let's go ahead and put the little mushroom lid on. Oh my god, this is adorable, you guys. I'll definitely get some close-ups at the end, but do you see how freaking cool this looks? Oh my god, now I'm regretting only buying four of these, but I can't even imagine where I would put more, so it's fine. But like, oh my god, this is so cool. Let's keep going, let's keep going. Next up, who we got? Oh, so this is a T. sabulosum. This is actually a pretty feisty little tarantula. If you guys didn't know, they're very much like vegans. And I can see that this one molted not long ago, so yeah. There you go. Pretty drama free. I got some web. There it is. Really cool. Oh my gosh, can you guys see that web that it put down all the way across the entire enclosure? That's awesome. Let's put a lid on it. Another one, they're so, oh my God, I'm obsessed with these. All right, I got a T. Verdesi and an A. Samani. I know that A. Samani likes to burrow, so I'm going to give her, I think I'll give her this one, because this one looks like it has a little bit more substrate, I think. They're about equal, but this one might have a little more, so we'll save that one for her and put the T. Verdesi in this one. Very bolty little slings today. My tea Verdezzi. Look at that bum. I think I tried feeding this one last week and it wouldn't eat. So I'm pretty sure it's gonna molt soon. So 
Sorry these aren't the best views, but to be honest, they're pretty drama free anyway. You're not missing much except them walk out of the cup. The first one so far was the most dramatic. <laughs> I'm loving these, oh my gosh, these are so cool. I bet this one might actually enjoy burrowing as well. They definitely have like more areas to hide and stuff in these than they did in the little acrylic boxes, so that's cool. Three down, one more to go. Oh yeah, I definitely feel like the Ace Amani is gonna like this one. There's much more substrate. This Samani I've been raising for a heck of a, a long time. Like, I got this as the tiniest sling ever from my friend. She bred them. And I'm telling you, dude, like I had just got into the hobby when she gave me this. Like, it was like tiny, tiny, like a little bigger than a fruit fly tiny. And then now like five years, this is how big it is. So yeah, just so you guys know, Samani and any Afono Pelmo for that matter grow insanely slow. <laughs> I think you are gonna be the one to appreciate this the most. There you go. Look how blue this Samani is too. I think she molted recently, so they all look like they could probably eat, except the one in pre-molt, so I'll probably feed them all tonight. Look at it. Oh my gosh, you guys, that looks so cool. I think she's drinking. I'm gonna go ahead and label these and then I'll go ahead and give you guys a better close up at all of them. Thank you guys so much for watching like this video if you enjoyed subscribe if you're not and you want to be don't forget i have an instagram it is probably way too much it's at tarantula.cat you can go follow me there i also have a patreon podcast and a teespring it is all linked down below and i will see you guys soon let's get into the patreon pet pick